I've got some bad news, boys. I have an opinion. I have a few opinions, actually, and as we get into this video, where I will be rating all of the pistols in Phantom Forces from worst to best based on completely stock performance in my own view, so try and save the screaming for after the video. Thanks. By the way, yeah, there are 26, I think, pistols, so I'm gonna have to give these a stupid short amount of time per gun. If you like this, maybe I'll make a more in-depth tier list in the future. We'll see. Anyways, video. I don't think anyone will care too much that I think the M2011 is the worst pistol. Shocking when some of the others look like this, but we'll, we'll get to that. The M2011 isn't horrible stats-wise, average at best, if anything, and it's got a large magazine and looks super interesting, but its unlock level being 146 for said average stats makes it a horrible bang for the buck. Got that out of the way? Everyone calm so far? Everything's okay? No screaming? <sighs> okay, we can move on. Sadly, the GB22 comes towards the bottom for me personally. I'm a huge fan of these weird guns, but default performance is very bad. Oh, but Steven, it's got a thousand times headshot multiplier. That may be, but your average player is not a level 350 that has nothing better to do than fly around and get one taps all day. It's really fun with conversions, but stock performance, not, not too great. Christ, here we go. Yeah, the Zip 22 is bad. I know, I know. Funny Zip 22. Haha, -ha, no damage. So silly and quirky. Ooh. But again, from a realistic standpoint, it is a very poor secondary that is sometimes funny. Sure. Maybe even a little too funny sometimes. But 15 damage is 15 damage. And the ultimate no recoil setup cannot save that fact. Real quick, please understand that a lot of these are basically the same stats-wise, so it's really difficult to be able to pick just one over the other, so I may lump a few together. Try to keep the, uh, but this one has more damage than that, comments at bay, please. Thank you. With that said, I'm lumping these next two together here. I love basically all of the low-level weapons in the entirety of Phantom Forces, and I love both the M9 and G17. They give a lot of great stats for level 0 unlocks. I shouldn't even call them unlocks, really. You just have them. But the thing that I hate is the way that the recoil is animated. It makes it really difficult to see where your bullets are going whenever you're spamming. Are the bullets landing at where the front sight is, or where the crosshair is when the gun's facing forward? Who knows? I'm also putting together the G21 and G23 in the same kind of lower spot, because while they have less of that G17 and M9 style recoil, they still suffer from it quite a bit, and while damage and damage range are fairly solid for both, being level 21 and 23 respectively, I, I just feel that there are better options at similar levels. Speaking of similar levels, I really struggle to place the G40 on one hand. It's not too high of a rank at, who guessed it, rank 40. It's got a decent damage range, decent multipliers that make it like a three shot. It's at least a guaranteed four shot, but something about it just feels super clunky. I, I think it's a mix of like the lower fire rate and a still pretty bad Glock style recoil. But I, I don't know. It's if you like it, you like it. The Makarov hurts to even include anywhere on this list near the bottom because it holds such a special place in my heart. From the multiplayer on Black Ops 1 to the hills of Apocalypse Rising, it is a personal favorite of mine for Cold War era weapons. But while a solid looking gun in Phantom Forces on the surface, I feel like a lot of its potential is hindered by its 8 plus 1 round magazine, which kind of kills it for me to recommend, especially at almost rank 100. No matter where I put this, people will get mad. If I put it at the worst, people are gonna get mad. If I put it at the best, people are gonna get mad. Just try not to get mad. <laughs> but I think that the 1911 is really middle of the road, hence why it's towards the middle. It's a low rank unlock, but it's got fairly poor recoil and a pretty small magazine, but it makes up for those shortcomings for the most part with having really good damage. Overall, pretty okay, not my go-to though. This gun is basically everything the 1911 is, but with ever so slightly reduced recoil and slightly higher magazine capacity in favor of slightly reduced damage. Give a little, take a little. Those are the trade-offs. The hard baller balls kinda hard. It's a scaled up 1911 with less close-up damage than the last two variants, but it gives you a lot more muzzle velocity and penetration, and it feels super beefy to use even with reduced damage. Still slaps. All other 1911s aside, what's better than a 1911? Two 1911s, glued together for convenience. Fancy. These take the whole recoil issue I keep talking about to a whole other level. Meanwhile, cranking up damage a ton since you're firing two shots at once, this thing can literally one shot to the torso up to 55 studs. It's, it's wild. It almost makes the fact that it costs 201 ranks worth it. 
Now, obviously, these being my opinions, I I'm a bit biased. <laughs> they are opinions after all, but you give me an integrally suppressed Makarov with stupid high damage and then even higher torso and head multiplier, and I'm a happy guy. <sighs> Sadly, we still have a small magazine, but with its increased damage and its satisfying sound, and the fact that you can one tap makes it very high on my personal list. I know this would probably be lower on someone else's list, but this is mine. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna lump the, the G50 in here too. It's, it's similar enough. I didn't realize how overpowered the GSP was because, well, who, who wants to use this? And looking at the damage figures, it looks really bad on the surface, but it has a wild headshot multiplier and out to 65 studs, mind you, it can one tap. Similar to the GB22 in the sense that you have to hit a headshot with it, but you get a five plus one round magazine. So it's like the GB22 with an extended mag. Pretty sweet, would recommend. The alien, oh god. This 8,000-ish dollar competition pistol is also a headshot machine, just like the GSP, but with slight tweaks to damage figures and a lot less damage range, though a 17-round magazine. Noise. The KG-99 is also another one that's like weird to place. It's basically just a semi-auto tech 9. Great damage, low recoil, high magazine capacity. Besides being a well-rounded pistol and a fairly low rank, it's just pretty good. Also nice. The Gyrojet, definitely one of the most unique, quirky girl boss guns in the entirety of Phantom Forces. The Gyrojet fires essentially rockets, so I, need I say more? Yes, because damage is increased the farther away you are, so it's basically a sniper. A personal favorite of mine to pair with SMGs, just use it, it's, it's great. 5.7 gives a great balance between damage, fire rate, magazine capacity, and awesome looks. Muzzle velocity and penetration shouldn't be too big of a deal in the secondary category, but this does really well in both those aspects too, making it perfect for spamming a ton on maps like Metro and Warehouse through thin walls. To maximize damage though, we've got to go over to the Deagle L5. It has fantastic damage at all ranges, plus a nice torso multiplier, and if you don't panic spam, it's really, really accurate too. Definitely an amazing gun for only being rank 18. Very epic. Really, I, I think that this one should have been called the Hardballer, honestly, because this is an absolute monster. Look at that single shot damage. Look at this meaty man. Yeah, it's just big damage, but big fun. Eight out of 10, another great buy. Now, this is one of my personal favorites here, the GIM-1. It's just a chonky, massive 1911 that can three-shot at all ranges with as much as 60 damage at the 25 studs, not including multipliers. It is a CQC player's dream, but wait, there is another. Yeah, I I'm just putting the Deagle XIX and the Grizzly into the same spot because, I mean, they can both one-shot torso close range, both have insane recoil and small magazines, but seven rounds is all that you need with these thick boys. I think the Grizzly is my favorite of the two because it's just a fat, chonky, deagled up 1911, and it sounds and looks gargantuan. Do you, un do you understand that they're big yet? They're huge! Honestly, th they're, they're both just fantastic. <laughs> I, I have nothing bad to say. Honestly, this was super hard. Like I said, a lot of the secondaries are basically the same, so it mostly comes down to which ones that you personally enjoy better. Again, an opinion. Crazy concept, right? But yeah, it was really nice getting to use these because I really never use the secondaries. Obviously, they're secondaries. They're not meant to be used all the time. But I'm glad that I had the opportunity and I found kind of a bit of new respect for something that's maybe not used as often. Shout out to all you secondary mains out there. But yeah, let me know what you think though. Uh, subscribe if you enjoyed and feel free to scream why I'm wrong in the comment sections below. Uh, K, thanks, bye. Uh, become a channel member, please, thanks, and uh, w watch the entire Phantom Forces playlist. I worked very hard. Uh, bye. Subscribe. Subscribe for more. Don't worry, I'll defend you. Metal pipe, metal pipe, metal pipe, metal pipe, <laughs> metal pipe. Bat, 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 <laughs> bunk, bunk, bunk.